Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so just a bit about me. I uh, created an open source package called Hamilton at Stitch Fix and then subsequently decided to start a company around it uh, called Dagworks. Uh, otherwise, for the bulk of my career, uh, you can kind of think, uh, uh, I can kind of term it now that I was in a MLOps for a, a pretty long time. So I'm here to talk to, about, talk to you about LMOps. Um, so who here uh, knows what LLMOps is? Sort of. Who here is practicing LLMOps now? Okay, a few of you. All right. Uh, who here knows what MLOps is? Anyone? Who here is practicing or has some initiative doing MLOps? Okay, most of you. Uh, and then uh, who here is on the technical side of things? All right, most of you. Who here is on the management side? Yeah, only a few people. Cool. Um, so. Uh, I'm going to try to give you an overview of the space, and then uh, if you do know it, then hopefully um, some uh, color and perspective. Uh, but to level set, why should you even care about you know, LLMOps, MLOps, or even, even DevOps for that matter, right? Um, if, a, if your CEO came up to you and asked you, you know, why, you, why, why should I care, uh, what would your response be? Uh, uh, for, for me, the one word kind of answer is leverage, right? Um, since delivering sustained value over time requires some sort of abstraction. Um, and so, for, for example, in machine learning, if you're building models, shipping it to production, right? And now with LMOps, building uh, you know, engineering prompts and changing apps, and then as the previous talks, you know, building rag systems, right? The idea with this kind of ops is that you're trying to uh, usually tactically build out some sort of platform or process that uh, provides you leverage, right? And so for the resourcing that you apply, the idea is that you get more out on the other end if you apply these processes uh, correctly. Uh, this is a short talk, so my brief overview will be, so I'll try to situate you know, LLMOps uh, against MLOps. Uh, I'll give you a bit of a match report on top of the fifth, abusing some baseball kind of uh, metaphors. Uh, but otherwise, then I'll give you a forecast where I, where I think things are going and then leave you with a take home. So, MLOps versus LMOps, you know, two fields, right? Um, uh, the interesting thing to note is, you know, MLOps as a field itself has roughly been only around maybe four years. Obviously, machine learning has been around longer for that, but the term and kind of the field uh, just around four years. LLMOps, though, is, you know, very nascent. This time last year, if you uh, ask someone, do they know, have you heard of LMOps? Like, pretty much no one was in, like, in the, there was pretty much no one who would have known what that meant. Right? And so it's only this year that this field has really you know, come about. Um, and so how does it compare to MLOps? Well, let's, let's uh, just recap MLOps a little bit. Um, uh, here I have a baseball diamond. Um, and so the idea is you know, with MLOps, you're helping get machine learning to production. Right? So we, ha we have some idea and, uh, and, and, and we have the right data and resources. Right? We then develop some sort of prototype to round the base, first base. Uh, to get around to second, then we take that what we developed and we're trying to get it to production. And then, you know, rounding third to home is like we, uh, you know, have it in production, we can monitor, maintain it, we have an effective process, and we're showing business value. And so, MLOps, right, for me is this kind of process of like things and uh, uh, systems that you need to help you round the bases to, to get to home, uh, to hit a home run, right? So, design to model development to then operations. Uh, so famously, here's this paper from Google uh, where, like, so what are the things that you need to uh, help you get around the bases, right? Uh, the point here being that m the machine learning code is the small, tiny box in the center, uh, while you know th th there are so many other boxes that are then required to help you operationalize and uh, bring machine learning to production. Uh, so what about LMOps? Well, I actually think it, it's a it's a you know a special case of MLOps, so a subset, if you will. Um, since you have the same kind of high-level problems that you're thinking about. So uh, do you have the right data and kind of idea to implement it? Uh, the development to prototype to production phase now is like prompt engineering with, with APIs, right? Um, and then maintenance you're, you're, and kind of business value, you still have to measure it, you still have to monitor it, you still have to understand, you know, is data changing, et cetera, and have uh, processes on uh, ensuring that you can get things to production uh, uh, stably. Uh, and, and so with respect to like the, 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 the systems and things, right, you might have heard of prompts, you know, fine tuning, embeddings, vector databases, uh, foundational models. To me, they're just special cases of, you know, MLOps, uh, of these boxes that uh, existed in the um, MLOps kind of world. 
So at a high level, you know, I, I think you know, they share the same general shape of problems. So code and data, and you've got to you know, observe and have processes around them. At a lower level, if you were to zoom in, right, just focus on LMOps as opposed to MOps, well, uh, in MLOps, you didn't need GPUs to get stuff done, but with LLMOps, it is required. That's what LLMs run on. Um, and so GPUs are a, a central core component. Uh, the application integration pace is very different, right? It's much easier to round the base to third base with uh, you know, LLMOps because all you're doing is uh, you know, starting with a foundational model, uh, engineering some prompts, uh, and then you pretty much have uh, you know, something that's working uh, pretty easily and quickly, whereas with MLOps, it was you know, much harder to get to production. Uh, and then, because of that, there are many more models in, in, in a single application with LMOps, right? You have prompts and API calls that you can chain. So if you're building a RAG uh, uh, you know, system, there's many uh, places where you have prompts uh, and, and API calls into a single call chain, right? And so then that means that you know, the software development lifecycle, how do you version things, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, how do you monitor things is a little more challenging um, than with MLOps because you generally didn't stack too many models together unless you're building, say, a recommendation system. And then evaluation is a little fuzzier uh, with, uh, with LMs than with traditional MLOps, right? Uh, you don't have a, a single floating value, floating point value, you have text. And so there's many ways you can evaluate it, so it's a little more challenging than LMOps necessarily to figure out is this a good answer? So, uh, let, let's, let's um, imagine we're in some game and we're at the, the top of the fifth. Um, so, uh, if the two teams that are kind of playing, the way that I see it is, you know, we have the proprietary foundational models versus the open source uh, foundational models, right? So, proprietary being OpenAI, Cohere, you know, Anthropic, et cetera, and open source being, you know, Falcon, Llama, uh, et cetera. Uh, the reason why I think we're about the top of the fifth is that we're about the f at the fifth generation of these models, right? Uh, so, you know, GPT-1 and 2 were actually many years ago, but, you know, what really started it was GPT-3, and so in which case, you know, uh, with, with the latest updates, I think we're about at the fifth inning. So this means we still have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, innings to go. Uh, and then in terms of uh, if you're a fan, uh, which, which team or side you're choosing, uh, really depends on, you know, y your privacy concerns. Are you really worried about cost? Uh, or you know, controlling um, most of the stack. In terms of the tooling to help you round the bases, um, you know, there's been a Cambrian explosion, if you will, of point solutions. Uh, things to manage prompts, things to help you trace the application, uh, things to help with evaluation, you know, self-hosting of models, open source models, fine tuning, right? embeddings, vector databases, people focused on privacy and governance, uh, tracking costs on API calls, there's just, you know, there's a plethora of options, right? And so, uh, uh, it, you know, you have a lot of choice. Uh, and then, in terms of uh, MLOps providers, uh, everyone now is transitioning to offer support for LMOps. So, you know, H2O being a, a classic example of being an old school MLOps, now, you know, uh, offering a lot of MLOps kind of capabilities. Um, so, uh, just to go through a bit of a challenge uh, or, or a play that I kind of seen. So, um, who here actually transitioned from GPT 3.5 to 4 for an application? Anyone? Okay, a couple of you. Okay, uh, well, compare notes afterwards. But um, so, with these foundational model updates, right? You kind of have to make a decision if you have an application. Do you update, right? Um, and the challenge really is, is that given a prompt. Uh, you know, these two foundational models are going to give you uh, different outputs. So if you had built an application and tuned things in a certain way, right, you now have to, like, uh, potentially rewrite your entire application. Um, and then as the technology improves, there are other things that, you know, this transition, uh, you know, brought about. So larger context windows. So uh, in the previous talk, you know, in, in the RAG talk, for example, a larger context window leads to better results. So m does that actually simplify now your engineering? Is there less, less uh, now are you deleting code, right? Um, and then uh, with these foundational models though, right, they're usually more expensive because uh, you're paying for tokens in and tokens out, right? And so is, is this uh, model that much better uh, with the cost? Uh, and then also from an application performance standpoint, uh, they also have different latency kind of characteristics. So in general, if you had this app, right, you gotta be, you gotta, uh, be able to answer the question, is this worth it? 
Um, and the people that I've seen do this well the most, right, have established pretty good LMOps practices, so being able to version prompts, understand how to uh, push things out into production. Uh, but in general, this has really been built around evaluation as their backbone. So given a change in a prompt in an API, they can quickly and easily evaluate, like, am I getting the results that I expect? Not only in the development cycle, but also when things have been pushed out to production. Um, so, that was a voluntary change. Uh, what about curveballs? Well, uh, until very recently, until OpenAI just announced you know, uh, a new feature uh, yesterday, but uh, people actually had to uh, update their prompts kind of uh, ad hoc or rather uh, unknowingly uh, when OpenAI pushed out a new foundational model update. Because uh, unlike, uh, or at least it wasn't the case until very recently, most foundational models, it's kind of hard to potentially c uh, control uh, you know, uh, the output, especially if you don't own the model and aren't serving it. So that was something you had to contend with. And then these foundational model providers are slowly building out more capabilities. So if you had jumped on 3.5 and you, know, uh, you had to build out something to upload PDFs, well, you know, uh, OpenAI just rolled out something the other week that you know, negates the possibility. So, uh, there's more features, and so if you had engineered things, now you have to ask the question, do I remove what I engineered or the solution I brought in, and instead, uh, uh, do I use uh, uh, these new um, uh, foundational model provider features? So, in this last couple of minutes of this talk, let's talk about at least uh, how I think where things might be going. So the one thing to take note is that you know, computation and cost curves are gonna continue to go down, right? So the cost today is gonna be different from six months, it's gonna be different from a year. So that is something if you're planning in terms of operationalizing, uh, you should take that into account um, and, and kind of plan for it. The other is foundational models, uh, much like open source databases and proprietary ones exist, I think they're here to stay. So uh, there are always gonna be improvements in both, both camps. And then I think uh, over time, you should continue to expect better context window improvements and actually you know, the ability to, uh, uh, the, the need for simpler prompts or rather uh, you shouldn't have to build complex prompts because these models will get better and so simpler prompts will get um, you further. And then with multi-model models, uh, you can kind of expect you know, more interesting uh, capabilities and, and uh, that to continue to uh, get better. In terms of organizationally, right, I think data is still your moat, just like in machine learning, right, uh, that is your moat. Uh, that is what your, your special secret source is, right? Um, but the key to operating here is really evaluations. You really got to be able to evaluate the impact of, of what it's doing on your business, but also evaluate your changes uh, pretty easily. Uh, what's interesting to note for me, I think, is that front-end and back-end developers are going to have to learn LMOps. Because a lot of these you know, foundational models now are behind APIs, and all they need is prompts, uh, but they, don't have, and have, they haven't learned the processes that you know, data can change and you need to monitor for it. Uh, but otherwise, from a cost curve perspective, and as time goes on, uh, you're going to explore fine tuning. So how can you get better output of your models? Um, uh, and so in which case, fine tuning is, is where you're gonna explore there. And then otherwise, uh, don't fire your data science and machine learning team, because you know, I think that's where uh, they're gonna end up uh, spending um, some time. And then lastly, from a tooling perspective in the space, right, you could, I think you'll continue to see uh, a reduction in wrappers or things that thinly wrap foundational uh, model APIs uh, since they will slowly uh, provide those capabilities. But in general from the space, I think there's gonna be a heavy focus on fine tuning and, and evaluation since those are two very core uh, related things uh, in uh, you know, rounding the bases and uh, creating a great LLM kind of product and experience. So my take home um, is one, uh, if you're going to play, you know, plan for rapid evolution, right? And so if you're gonna build something, expect to change it in six months, maybe even sooner, right? Uh, and so if you are gonna play though, you need to ensure that you have these strong LMOps practices um, to ensure that you can change and push things out and understand its impact and, its value, uh, and, uh, and how to evaluate it to ensure that you're actually building something uh, that isn't broken. Um, but otherwise, a small plug for what I'm doing. So uh, if you're interested in making uh, this kind of ops process much simpler, I am uh, you know, standardizing code here with my open source package called Hamilton and then with a few add-ins from Dagworks. Uh, but otherwise, thanks for listening. Uh, happy to take questions.